Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about bilirubin metabolism in the liver and the diseases which are associated with this part of the pathway. So first of all, I'm going to draw a hepatocyte, which is the main functional cell of the liver. And here I'm going to draw the endothelial lining of the liver sinusoids. Remember that endothelium is the type of cell that makes up blood vessel walls. But the walls of the sinusoids are more porous, and in this way they allow proteins such as albumin to pass through the vessel walls. In the previous video, we saw how bilirubin was brought into the liver attached to albumin. The albumin travels through the sinusoids and then passes into the space of DISA. Once in the space of DISA, the albumin and the bilirubin dissociate and the bilirubin moves into the hepatocyte via a bilirubin transporter. The bilirubin in the hepatocyte then gets acted upon by UDP glucuronyl transferase. This attaches glucuronic acid to bilirubin to produce bilirubin monoglucuronide, which in turn can have another glucuronic acid attached to produce bilirubin diglucuronide. Collectively, bilirubin mono and diglucuronide are known as conjugated bilirubin. Now the conjugated bilirubin can be excreted into the bile canaliculi, and this is done by a transporter called multidrug resistance associated protein 2, usually abbreviated MRP2. In this way, the conjugated bilirubin is excreted into the gut and the bilirubin pathway continues. Now I want to talk about the hereditary diseases associated with failure of metabolism. The first is a particularly nasty and rare disease called Krigler-Najjar syndrome. This is the result of a lack or major deficiency in UDP glucuronyl transferase. This causes a buildup of unconjugated bilirubin in the blood, which is toxic to the brain and which causes encephalopathy in newborns with this condition. The next disease is called Gilbert's syndrome, and it's caused by a reduced activity of UDP glucuronyl transferase. Usually, this syndrome is asymptomatic. However, during periods of increased hemolysis, that is, increased red cell breakdown, jaundice can occur. Other than some mild jaundice during these periods, Gilbert's is not thought to have any other symptoms. And it is said that about 5 to 10% of the population has Gilbert's syndrome, and thus maybe it shouldn't be classified as a disease. The next disease is called Dubin-Johnson syndrome. This is due to a mutation in the MRP2 protein, which means that the conjugated bilirubin is not excreted into the bile and the gut. This causes a buildup of conjugated bilirubin in the blood. However, because conjugated bilirubin is not toxic like unconjugated bilirubin, there are no symptoms other than jaundice, and treatment is usually not necessary. The last disease is called Rota's syndrome, and this disease is a bit of a mystery. It seems similar to Dubin-Johnson syndrome and causes an increase in conjugated bilirubin in the blood, but a cause for this disease has not been determined. A glutathione S transferase deficiency has been suggested as this is a transporter of bilirubin within the hepatocyte, but for now the cause is unknown.
And that's an overview of bilirubin metabolism and the associated diseases. For more free tutorials and the PDF for this tutorial, visit www.handwrittentutorials.com.